In this video, we're gonna learn all about saved rows and global saved rows in Beaver Builder. Now, if you don't know what a saved row in Beaver Builder is, or you've never heard about it, you've never used a feature, this lesson is gonna be extremely valuable because I use saved rows in every website that I build and they are time saving. And because they're time saving, you want to learn how to use them. Now, the best way to show you exactly what a saved row is, is to just jump right in and create our own and then I'll show you how they work. So here I'm editing a page with Beaver Builder and I've created this row here and this row has our newsletter email subscriber. So it has a heading module, a text editor module, and then over here it has our subscribe module, which is available in the paid versions of Beaver Builder. So this is linked up to our email service provider. So right now this form's linked up to MailChimp and when somebody fills this out, they would get our latest projects for this business sent straight to their email. Now for this row and this website, I'm probably gonna wanna have this row here appear on multiple pages throughout my website. So that's our requirement here. We need to get this row and insert it on multiple pages on our website. And saved rows is a feature in Beaver Builder that allows us to do that. Now to create a saved row, so say we wanna save this row, we go up here and we hover on the row and then we click on the wrench icon which is the row settings for this row. Now you can see down the bottom here of this row settings panel, there are three buttons. So save, if we click that, it just closes that modal and we go back to editing the page. Now in terms of saved rows in Beaver Builder, the button that we're concerned with down here is the save as. So if we click on that, it opens up this new modal and we get two different options here. The name, so what do we wanna call this saved row and also the global setting. So we're gonna go through the global setting later on in this lesson and I'll show you exactly how that works. And we're gonna compare a non-global row to a global row because that's the best way to show you how the global feature works. So let's give this saved row a name. Now a tip for naming things in Beaver Builder, come up with a naming convention that makes sense to you. So for me, I like to write row. And you can see that in my browser, it's saved a couple of these saved rows that I've created throughout building websites for my clients. And you can see I always start with row space, hyphen, space, and then a meaningful name for that row. So you can see there's a row testimonials, row footer widgets, uh, row links, row logos. So these all make sense to me, but I always begin with row, space, hyphen, space, and then the name. So let's go row, space, hyphen, space. Now, if you're building this site for a client, you're probably gonna wanna name it something that makes sense to your client and also yourself. So, Obviously this is a newsletter subscriber, so I'm just gonna write subscribe. So it's a row that has our subscribe module in it so that people can subscribe and go to our mailing list. Now we're gonna leave this global setting as no, so we're not saving this row currently as a global row, and we're gonna go ahead and click save. That says row save, it confirms that we've saved that row, and let's click okay. Now to go further and explain what exactly that's done, if we go up the top here and click on the add content button, we now get this new accordion that says saved rows. And if we click on that, you can see there's our row hyphen subscribe that we just created. So now what we can do is just like a module, we can click and drag that into a page. So we might go down and we might wanna add it here. So then release. And now that's taken that whole row that we just saved and inserted that row with all the content in it. And as you can see, we didn't have to go ahead and recreate that row. And that's saved into our database, which means we can insert that into any page on our website. So that's the power of saving a row. You can reuse your content and add that row into different pages on your website without having to go and recreate it. So let's go ahead and insert that into another page. So we're gonna go ahead and click done and then publish changes, and we're gonna save this page. Now let's go on to our FAQs page. So you can see currently there's no subscribe row on that page. So we're gonna go ahead and launch Beaver Builder. And then let's say we wanna add that at the bottom of the page. We go over to save rows, and then we click on the row subscribe and drag that into the page. 
and you can see there's our row and then we can click done and publish changes. And if we scroll down, we can see there's that row. So that's what a saved row does in Beaver Builder. You get this new option over here, which allows you to drag a row into any page that you can edit using Beaver Builder. And it drags that row with all its content in there, already started with all the modules and all the settings on the modules, columns and rows. So by doing this, we're reusing content and we're saving time. Now, previously in this lesson, I explained that these are actually saved in the database as a Beaver Builder template. So let's understand that. It's a Beaver Builder template, which allows us to do two things. We can manage these the same way that we would manage a template in Beaver Builder. So before in previous lessons, if we clicked on templates, these are all the templates that we've saved ourselves, and that's why it says your templates. And we can click edit to edit that template, or we could delete the template here. And that's exactly the same for saved rows. We get this wrench icon. So if I click that, we're now editing just this saved row. So I could come into here and I could change this text from get our latest projects to get our best projects. And then I could save this row just like a normal Beaver Builder template. And that's redirected me back to the page I was editing. And notice how that row that was already on our page did not update. But from here on, when we drag this row into a page, so there's our new row, it gets that updated heading. So that's how a saved row in Beaver Builder works. So let's go ahead and let's remove both of these. And then let's just drag it back into the page. So there's our saved row. Now let's go ahead and change the background color for this row to maybe a pale red color. And let's save that. And then let's go and click done and publish changes. And if we scroll down the page, we can see this row now has a red background. But if we go back to the home page where we initially created and saved this row, and scroll down, you can see that this instance of the row has a gray background. So when we made the change and updated that background from a gray to a pale red, it didn't update on this home page where we also have this row. If you want that functionality where you update a row in one place and it updates anywhere else on your website, that is what a global saved row does. And I wanna show you how you can leverage that to build websites faster. One application that I use a saved global row for every website that I do is for the footer. So if we scroll down the bottom of this homepage, so this is currently the bottom of our website, but I wanna add a footer to this page and I also want that footer to appear on every page on our website. So currently we have three pages on our website, the homepage, the about us page and the FAQ. So let's say I wanna add a footer row to the bottom of those three pages on our website currently. So if we go to add content and then saved rows, you can see previously to this lesson, I've already gone ahead and designed a row that I've called footer widgets. So let's click and drag that into the bottom of this homepage. And if we scroll down, that's the row that I wanna have at the bottom of every page on our website. So currently that's a saved row. So what we could do is we could click done and then publish changes. So now that's at the bottom of our homepage. And then I could click on the about us page and I could edit this page with Beaver Builder. Scroll down the bottom, click on saved rows. Drag this saved row back into the bottom of this page. Click done and then publish changes. So that's now down there. And then I'd also repeat it for the FAQs page. So I would do that as a manual process by editing every page on my website. Now let's go ahead and let's say we want to change this title from our difference to our mission. And we also want to remove this logo here. 
So what we could do is we could edit this page using Beaver Builder, go down the bottom, then edit this heading module and change it to our mission and then save. And then we could go ahead and edit this text editor module and then delete this image and then click save. Then we would save this page. So now that's updated. Then we would go to our home page, go down the bottom, and then we would edit this page and then we would remove that logo and change that heading and save that. And we would have to keep doing that for every page. And as you can see, that would become very repetitive. Every time that we want to update the information here, we'd have to go and edit every page on our website and then make those changes each and every time. Now that might be okay if you have a two or three page website, but once you start getting into 10, 20, 100 pages, it becomes something that it, you can't manage. But Beaver Builder has a feature that overcomes that and it's called global saved rows. I'm gonna show you exactly how they work. So let's go ahead and let's edit this page here. And then let's go down. So there's our saved row, the footer widgets row. And if we click the wrench icon to go to the row settings, and then we click save as, let's name this row footer widgets again, but then let's write global. And I wanna write global because we already have the row hyphen footer widgets that is not global that we have been using in this tutorial but we're gonna go ahead and save this as global. And if we hover on this tooltip for the global setting, it says global rows and modules can be added to multiple pages and edited in one place. And that's exactly what we wanna do. We wanna add this footer row to the bottom of every page, but only edit it in one place. So let's go ahead and say global to yes, and then click save and click okay. So now you'll notice when we hover on this row, what was usually blue is now this orange color. So this orange color indicates that it's a global row. And if we click on add content and then saved rows, you can see there's that row that we just saved and it also says global next to it. So that's how you can distinguish between a normal saved row and a saved row that is global. It has this orange global text next to it. So let's click done and then publish these changes. And then let's edit our about page and then edit it with Beaver Builder. And then go down to the bottom and delete this normal row. And then under saved rows, let's drag in that global row. And as you can see, when we drag in that global saved row, it also has that orange background, which indicates it is that global row. Now we're on the about us page and let's go ahead and click on the wrench icon to go into the row settings. So now we're editing just this global saved row. So let's go ahead and change this title from our difference to our mission. And then click save. And then let's go ahead and click on this and delete this image and then click save. And then maybe also delete this subscribe form. So we've just made some updates to our global saved row. And now let's click done. And then let's publish the changes. And as you can see, it's updated these on the about us page that we're just editing. So once we had saved the changes that we made to this global saved row, it redirected us back to the page that we were initially editing. And then we can click done and publish changes. And if we scroll down, you'll notice that those updates have also been applied to this about us page. But if we go back to the home page and scroll down to the bottom, 
you can see that those updates have also been applied to the home page. So that is how a global saved row works. You can edit it in one place and then it updates anywhere that you've dragged and dropped that into a page. So that's the difference between a normal saved row and a saved row with that global setting enabled. A normal saved row you can add multiple times into any page, but when you edit it, it doesn't update anywhere else on the website. But when you save a row with that global setting as yes, you can actually edit that row and make changes. And then when you save that global row, it updates on every page of your website. You don't actually need to go and make multiple edits. Now, the next thing that I wanna show you guys in terms of these saved rows and saved global rows is how you can manage it in the dashboard of your website. So if we click to go back to the dashboard of this WordPress website, and then we go back to our templates section, so you can see there's our row with the global setting enabled for the footer widgets. There's the footer widgets that was just a saved row without that global setting enabled. And there's our row that was our subscribe row. So just like you can with the templates, like I showed you in previous lessons, you can come into here under templates, all templates, and you can actually go ahead and edit your global rows and your normal saved rows in here. And another thing that I wanna point out while we are on this template screen is that under type, the saved rows that we just saved, you can see the type is row, but then our page templates that we've saved have the type layout. So that's another way that you can distinguish between a page layout that you saved and a row that you saved by this type column here. And if you don't see this type column here, come up to screen options and you'll see it up here where you can toggle it on and off. So that wraps up how a saved row works in Beaver Builder. And by now you should also have an understanding of what checking that global option means when saving a row to create a global saved row means and how a global saved row can be edited in a different way to a saved row. I also showed you some applications of when you might use both. So for example, the global saved row, that is great for creating a footer because you can add it to the bottom of every page, but you only have to edit it in one place for it to update to the bottom of every page that you have on your website. Incredibly valuable and extremely time-saving. To get a better understanding of how they do work, I do suggest go ahead and build a page and play around with those settings. There's no harm done in creating them because you can always delete them from your website. So jump right in, have a go, and when you're ready, go on to the next lesson. Mm -hmm.